Hey everyone, you are live on Professor and Friends. Thank hey, you buddy. for being here. Welcome to the show. Man, it's been too long since I've seen that intro. Oh my that just makes my day. I love it. My goodness, that was. I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. I love being on here. I love talking with you. I love visiting with everybody. And you too, uh, buddy. We uh we missed last week. Duty called. I had to work way too much, and um, it just didn't work out. But you know, I got I got a few days off. I got to do a few things. Uh, yeah. COVID shut my school down. And uh, so I got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off. And uh, my wife said, you really need something to do. You're not going to stay around here. And uh, my FJ was in the shop getting a re-gear. Nice. And uh, so anyway, I called Aaron up at Artemis and, and I said, hey, man, you got anything for me to do? And he said, yeah, come on. So I completely <laughs> reorganized his whole showroom up there. Nice. And, uh, I think he was pretty pleased. Uh, Caitlin and all the kids who work in there every day, they were like, man, we thought we had this place organized and you just have some special ability. I'm like, no, I don't. I just know where, I just know where to put things, you know? So uh, anyway, had a good time up there and uh, come back. And uh, hey, Miss Arla. Nice, hey, hey. nice of you to join us. Uh, she's She is one of our one of our super fans. For some she's reason. pretty awesome. She's pretty amazing. I might be biased, but you are biased, but that's okay. <laughs> You're biased, but that's okay. But um, how how's your week been? How's how was last week and your weekend been, Tony? Oh, it's been great. Uh, yeah, just just wonderful. We uh, uh, I don't know. We our school was shut down a little bit. I had uh, McKenna at home and. Uh, did some did some stuff around here and caught up on some projects in the garage, cleaning up, organizing. Started a little trailer project. A little trailer project. Now, yeah. now this is something that we're going to discuss as part of our show here because this trailer project came as a result of what we're going to be talking about. Yes, tonight, our trip. Yeah. Um, to big bend south texas and uh, I, I do want to cover that because that is something that a lot of people will want hey, to um, want to you know listen to think about maybe ponder over that's right if you've never experienced the base camp uh, part of overlanding it's it's something to behold it, it is, is. Uh, convenient it's nice it uh it levels off the stress a little bit um you know people you think that people are having to wait on you, um, you know, just just all all kinds of different things. So, so we will be talking about we will be talking about that a little bit. But let's see. Chad said, "Did you get that one I seen on Facebook Marketplace? I almost drove, but my butt to Arkansas to get it, and then I seen you had messaged them. Is that the one you picked up?" No, buddy. Uh, a good friend of mine, Michael, uh, gave me an old trailer he had laying around. So I'm I'm starting kind of, kind of from the ground up. Yeah, uh, that's on bare a, bones now. Yeah, yeah. On a, it's almost like on one of the trailer. trailers you haul chickens now. Chicken <clears throat> almost. On yeah. Or get you a get you a bull calf and take to the market. 
Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty rough shape. It needs it needs some uh, TLC. It's been sitting for a while, but uh, I don't know. It's got. Hello, Jerry. Got some... Welcome to the show. Welcome hey, buddy. to the show, Jerry. Well, I'm excited about your trailer. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's uh, watching this all come about and it, it all being my fault. Uh, I'm, I love it. I <laughs> it is your fault. So, uh, you know, every time me and you talk, it either call, it, it makes you work more or costs you money Yeah, uh, for some reason. That's <laughs> right. That does. It sure does. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, it's fun. We have a great time. And um, and uh, I tell you what, I, I don't. I've got my coffee. I've got my coffee brewed over here. I did me a pour over right before the show because I am wore out. You probably should have added some energy to that coffee. I'm tired. And let me tell you, if if you're not if you're one of these guys like me that you you like to turn your own wrenches, you got like to put your own parts on. I know you are Tony. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. But when I can I do. It for us old fat men, it it'll wear it'll take the <laughs> it'll take it out of you now. I have been yesterday I spent about seven hours underneath my car laying on my head with my hands above my head. And I looked up at my wife and I said, this is why I did not become a mechanic. Oh, I had heartburn all day. I was dizzy all day. Every time I stood up, I had, I got dizzy. I'd sit back yep. down. Yep. Putting sliders on. We got some new sliders. Uh, that was one of our Christmas presents. It didn't mean to be a Christmas present because I ordered them in March. Yeah. But they got here on December 23rd. So I looked at my wife and said, Merry Christmas. You're getting sliders for Christmas. <laughs> so what could be better? I mean, and, who doesn't want sliders for Christmas? I mean, that's awesome. Hey, it's perfect timing. That's perfect right. Timing. Hey, Kayla. Kayla. How are you? Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, Sasha says, I feel his pain on the professor costing money. Now, listen, I'm not going <laughs> to take all this bashing here. I'm not going to take all this 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 just throwing darts because it's not all my fault it's not all I, my fault i heard porker's got it bad porker's got it bad does he it's really bad <laughs> it is it is really bad and i pray for sasha because she needs it. um yeah look at look at your wife i Tell swear she's She's sassy. Now, she can't really say anything because I've mentioned a few things on here and she was like, yep, got to have one of those. Yep. Put yep. that on your list. Yep. You got to yep. do that for me. So um, it's not yep. all my fault. That stinking air conditioner is still on the list. Uh, Porker said, hell, I'll admit it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Well, you know, it's, it's one of these things when the bug bites, <clears throat> when the bug bites, it bites hard. It does. And there's there's a lot of cool things out there that'll make your life really, really um, safe, yeah. comfortable, pleasurable, and we do it for our wives. That's why yeah. we do it. All this stuff that we buy, me, you, Porker, all the guys out there, we buy it for our wives. And so, you know, our, our first names should be others because that's yeah. what we're about. We're all about pleasing others. Yeah. And uh, we'll take the hit. We'll take the hit, and you can just blame us all you want because that's why we're here. We're here to <laughs> make our wives happy. Yeah, Jared said, "Love the patch on the mic, Joey. I appreciate that, Jared." Uh, our uh, Tony has come up with his Bucky's patch. Tony yeah. got to go to a Bucky's for the I first did. time. How did I that did. go for you, Tony? Oh man, it was great. Uh, we left out of there. I don't know, one hundred and fifty dollars later, and like I don't know, two pounds of jerky, and that was. Those barbecue cashews that Matt was talking about, yeah, those were amazing. They didn't last yeah. long either. A couple of patches, and I don't know, hey Nathan, yeah, but yeah, it was a good time. That What's up, play. Nathan? The Overland photographer is in the house. Hey, buddy, um, glad to have you all the way up in Northeast Arkansas. Oh man, and Jared says Bucky's is coming to Springfield, and everybody's excited. I'm already out of that jerky, so Bucky's couldn't come to Springfield fast enough. Well, well, I'm excited because I go to Springfield. I don't go to Texas much, and yeah. uh, I like going to Springfield. I'll be frequenting the Bucky's, I'm sure. 
and uh, picking me up some of these barbecue cashews that Matt says are out of this world. So, so, so are they all? Are all the Bucky's built about the same? I mean, I don't know. Uh, Aaron less, told me like, that it came out in the newspaper that they will have a hundred gas pumps. Wow, that's a lot. Well, what I'm hoping for is they have that jerky buffet. <laughs> I mean, it, it, there was a counter probably, I don't know, 20 feet long and had every style and kind of jerky you could imagine in there. And you get to test it all. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, well, I hope they got one of those in Springfield. Hmm. Yes, they are. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> I'll have to drive all the way to Dallas for some of that jerky. Well, uh, we may be we may be planning a trip to the Dallas area, maybe even this weekend. What? I hate to admit it. I hate to admit it. The guy down at the place where Matt and Kara bought their trailer, they just got the four forties in today. Oh no. And uh he messaged me as soon as he took three pictures, and he said, we got them. Do you want me to put your name on one? And I was like, oh, Craig. Oh, dear heaven. You're killing so, me, Smalls. Anyway, <laughs> we may go down there and look at them and, uh, and take, a, take a gander at them and see what they've got to offer. But I was highly impressed with the 490. It was just oh, a yeah. little big. Um, but Connie and I, we talked over dinner. Maybe uh, we may see a uh, tundra in our future. Oh boy! Never know. Nope, won't be going to Dallas to watch the Cowboys because they mm. pooped a brick yesterday. That was so disappointing. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. Arla says road trip. Well, you might uh, you might think about that because I saw. I don't know what it's going to be up where you live, but I think the high on Saturday is twenty six. So there really won't be any uh, outside, much act, outside activities for us with a highlight yeah. like that. But we'll see what happens. We may, you never know what, what we might play and what we might do. Uh, I'm off Friday night and um, all day Saturday. I have to be back to church Sunday. So you never know what we, might, what we might plan. But anyway. That's right. But the reason I'm so sore and tired is that all this stuff got delivered to my house on the 23rd and we had christmas the 24th 25th and on the 26th we left for south texas for a week and it sat in my all this 900 pounds of steel sat in my living room for about nine days and I come back and I just had to look at it. I'd stump my toe on it and I'm like, this stuff's got to go. <laughs> and, um, so Saturday was a wash, you know, it was rained all day, snowed in the afternoon. It was cold. It was nasty. Yeah. Sunday came, the sun came up, it got warm, all the snow melted. And I'm like, I think I can go outside and work. So, uh, Went out there, took my old sliders off, put my new sliders on. Me and Connie got out there. She was sitting in the grass with a pair of tweezers trying to fit this little nut onto this screw. And both of us were just about to lose our minds. But we got them on there, and they look super good. Uh, Expedition 1 does a fantastic, amazing job. These guys, yeah. I... I've seen a lot of welding in my day, and these guys, they must have machines doing it because it's all perfect. It looks so good. And then uh, my dual swing-out bumper that I had been waiting for for years, and I was scared to death to try to do this. My Tony and I had talked about this, about me making a trip up to your house because yeah. I needed some help. Matt and Kara came over yesterday, and I told Matt, he said, why is this bumper sitting in your, in your floor? I said, well... <laughs> I've never taken on a job this big. And I said, it came with two boxes full of nuts and bolts and screws and all kinds of stuff. And I said, this is a little bit more than I think I can handle. I'm not real sure if I can do this. I'm not real sure that I'm up to this. I mean, yeah. 
it, it's funny on their on their instructions they have what level of ability do you have to have to do this bumper and it has five stars and it has like uh a dummy all the way to expert you know and parts of it were four stars and parts of it were two stars today i did the four star part too and it man this thing's got a lot of parts dual swing outs this and i i had a good bumper on there and i was i was completely happy with my bumper but i had to get some weight off my back door yeah otherwise there's going to be one of these trips to South Texas. I was probably going to leave my back door down there. Because <laughs> yeah. every time I opened it, man, I was, I was like cradling it like a little newborn baby. And I yeah. was like, I got to get some weight off here. So this bumper will take my spare tire and wheel. It'll take my rack and everything that goes on my rack off my back door. <laughs> so you're talking... It's going to take a hundred pounds off my back door. Easy. So I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to work out perfect and it's very, very exciting, but yeah. I can promise you this and those out there who have an expedition one <laughs> bumper laying in your laying in your living room right now, listen to me. I know there's a bunch of you. <laughs> it takes more than one day. You can't do it in one day. I promise. Whew, I gotta have a drink, don't I? Yeah. But anyway, <coughs> I'm excited because yeah. I got I got the bumper on and I got both swing outs on. And so now I don't have anything to latch them with, so if I drive down the road, they're just gonna flop. So can't go anywhere yet. But on top of that, on top of that. <laughs> that's me on top of that is that somebody sending you a fax tony uh no i think uh i think somebody is using the printer oh uh, okay yeah All somebody's right. using using the printer while i'm on the show <laughs> hey look at there tony uh, nathan said the schedule on your wall is looking good i guess he can read it we had that talk we didn't know if anybody could read it so i guess you can read yep it. yep we're trying to be uh Trying to be educational and helpful, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that's up there and everybody can read it. Josh, I appreciate you. Uh, hey, Josh. For being here. Yeah. Uh, Travis, thank you for being here. Hey, Travis. Uh, late. It doesn't matter. We're going. Doesn't to be matter, buddy. Um, but the I got the bumper on. Got the got the things on. The the two swing outs. I'm I'm so excited. This is going to be amazing. So, um you know the tired the sore all the cuts and scrapes the black that i probably won't be able to get off my hands for weeks it's going to be worth it i promise yeah. it's going to be worth yeah. it so and and your trailer's looking good you've got uh you cleaned out your garage you've got it all tore apart so um what uh you ordered some stuff for it today yeah so uh one of the things that i still had to do is kind of organize and clean you know when we get back from a trip we try to you know, clean things and put them up and, you know, just get things prepped and ready to go for the next trip so we can just grab them and pack the rig or whatever we're taking and go. Uh, so I had to do that, but uh, kind of started taking the trailer apart a little bit. Um, I was planning on reusing uh, the axle that came with it, um, but I, I uh, when I kind of realized it, need a little bit more love than than I was prepared for. So I just went ahead and ordered a, a new axle and suspension for it and some wheels and tires today. And uh, I got to get my steel order ready and get that ordered. And mm -hmm. um, so what's your uh, now? This is just uh, what is it? A five by eight, six by eight? Yeah, it's a it's just a five by eight utility trailer. Utility and, trailer. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna convert it and put a put a rack and a frame on it and get some uh, some of those under bed uh, truck boxes that you told me about. Get yep. get some of those mounted and uh, I've got already got a water heater and stuff like that for it. So I'll get a pump and tank and have you know on board water storage for it. And yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, cool. 
So well, that's um, that'll be a very interesting for us to follow because a lot of people um, are into the built not bought uh, category. They like to save yeah. some money, so you can you can find a six by eight utility trailer all over the place. They're they're loaded. Um, it's not like you know, you're looking for a custom overlanding trailer out there. So you turning this ordinary piece of equipment into an overlanding piece of equipment, that's going to be very interesting. And I'll, I'll be excited yeah. to visit. Yeah. I'll share, I'll share some pictures along as I go and, uh, we'll, uh, uh kind of keep you all up to date on that journey. Yeah. So, so, um, this decision that you have made to build this trailer, <laughs> or to go the trailer route came as a result of our trip to big mint. So 100%. Tell, yep. tell us how that, tell us how that evolved. Well, so, uh, you know, all week we were, uh, you know, camped with you guys and you had your trailer there and you had your base camp set up and we made the decision to take two vehicles, uh, because we wanted to get, get some experience for, for Arla. You know, she's got that trip coming up, the women's trip in June. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have two tents, a tent on her Jeep too. So, um, but it really kind of cemented the, the, you know, how nice it is to have a base camp where you can just get up and get ready and go and not have to tear down. So, you know, that style of, of camping, having that ability in our, you know, in our, you know, Mm -hmm. equipment setup, I guess, is, is going to be big. So, you know, seeing the, the benefits firsthand that, that you and Connie had during that week was, was great, you know, and we kind of felt like you guys were waiting on us to break camp, you know, a few times. So anyway, well, it's, and, and that was not the case. I can promise you that because if there's one thing that I love to do, it's piddle around camp and I can yeah. do that all day. I can do that all day. But I could tell that I could tell it was stressing you. In fact, um, it stressed you so much, uh, or the the amount of work that you had to do to pack up both vehicles was so much that you ended up changing your whole plan for the week. Yeah, we did. <clears throat> so you know, the first day that we were there, uh, we went into the park and uh, got our got our feet wet on some of the off-road and, and you packed up both of your your vehicles because yep. uh, Arlen McKenna were staying in her tent and you had all your tent to yourself. Yeah. And I remember you telling me how much you enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> so you could stretch out, <laughs> do whatever, fart and snore. I mean, you just, yeah, you just do whatever you want because you were by yourself. Um, but, you know, the rest of the week, you just decided – Ah, screw this. We're just going to pack up one and just take one. So it ended up changing your plans, and I and I hate that for you, but you were able to see how much having a trailer base camping in a situation like this. You know, a, a lot of times we go where we do move around every day, yeah, uh, or we go and we we've got a route that we're taking, and that's actually how your original plan on your trip was actually going to be. Right. Uh, and that's how when y'all originally planned to take two vehicles, you know, we're going to pack up and move every day. And um, but when we went together and decided to stay in one place, that was a whole different way of of, of doing things. And that's why that's why we took the trailer. Yeah. So it, it takes away. We were down there six days. You're packing up and opening a tent six times where we did ours once. Right. And that makes a huge difference on time, stress level, um, you know, situating all your gear and, and everything like that. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's the same exact thing that we had dealt with in the past. And that was what cemented our decision to build a trailer as well. Yeah. So yeah. years ago. So um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, we were able to affect you uh in a in a in a great way so uh we'll get to see this trailer bit i'm excited yeah, yeah I'm it'll excited. be fun so uh, yeah we, we didn't have an agenda that's for sure it's but we just anyway you know we didn't um we didn't uh travis de says definitely see the options a trailer gives you uh you know my first trip to colorado 
was with a, a guy who had a trailer and um, I had to set up and take down every day. And, and you know, I had an eye camper, so it really didn't take me that long. It was, yeah, it was really easy up and down, but just the tent itself is not all that you have to put up and take down because if you're cooking uh, with a stove and it's on your tailgate, like yours, you have to pack it up, put it up yeah. uh, where I set mine up, you know, one time and we were done. Um, and so all that stuff, uh, if your bedding can stay in your tent, if it can't, you have to take all that out. Um, you know, and so it was, uh, it was, a uh, you know, something to think about. And yeah. I, I could tell that you were thinking about it and, and thinking, man, it sure would be nice not to have to pack this stuff every day. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, For and sure. it was warm by the time that we would get up and eat breakfast and leave around 10 or 11 o'clock south texas in december it's warm i mean we have yeah. t-shirts and shorts every day and still a lot of times we were breaking a sweat yeah um you know setting up taking it down um chess is weighed on a vehicle uh that's definitely uh that's right, you have to think about that how heavy it is that's the reason that connie and i can't buy the 490 because our vehicles won't pull it um travis says my only issue would be the added gas with pulling a trailer that um let's see okay we can compare my vehicle to arla's vehicle going down there because ours are similar i, I can't compare it to your gladiator because that's like something from the future um <laughs> you know if, if you can if you can sit in your living room and start your vehicle i'm not even talking to you so uh arla what what was arla's gas mileage normal gas mileage going down there uh let's see I guess she was averaging for the whole trip, uh, probably between 13 and 14. Okay. I think um, it was a little bit better at some times, just depending on she says where we were at. 14 points. Okay. That was for the whole trip. That wasn't, you know, the 250 miles that we had a 40 mile on our wind in our face. Yeah. Um, but we did pretty much the whole trip together and back minus a couple hundred miles, but it was the same type of terrain y'all going and coming so yeah. the difference in the added gas prices to me i normally get about 17 in my vehicle i was getting 13. so four miles a gallon uh, it is it is a little more costly um, to me i can you know it cost me about 40 miles i guess on a tank so having to stop that much it probably cost me about Seventy-five dollars to pull my trailer down there. On yeah. what it would have saved me if I hadn't. Yeah. Now, to me, to me, that was worth it. Just being able to set everything up once and leave it, I'd pay seventy-five dollars to do that. Yeah. You know, I guess it's what you're willing for comfort. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't pay that much attention to the gas uh, in our jeeps these days because. What I used to drive was a Ford Super Duty with a V10 gas engine, and um, you know, around town here, just driving it, you know, here into town and back, I was getting between 10 and 11 miles per gallon on the average. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, our fifth wheel we took down to um, Disney World in Florida, down to Orlando, and I averaged pulling that trailer down there. I averaged 6.7 miles per gallon. Shoo goodness so i don't you know i i just i'm just thankful i'm not doing having that average these days <laughs> well and and to travis you know he says that's not as bad as you would have thought um you, you have to see and and figure in what kind of trailer that you have and all the gear that you're that you're carrying with it so um we try not to carry anything that we wouldn't normally carry um now um we do have the weight of the trailer but the stuff that we carry in the trailer is stuff that we would normally carry in the vehicle and so uh it's it was we're not carrying that much more weight we we are pulling something but um and it does have a tent it does have the biggest awning in the freaking world on it um but 
Um, you know, ours is not a big heavy trailer. It's just an open, open home built trailer. Uh, that's real small. Ours is not even as big as what Tony's is. Ours is a four by f three by five uh, inside. So it's it has a, it had a few cases in there. It had the annex in there that we didn't use. It had the walls for the awning that we never used. Um, so we did carry some stuff that we didn't use. We carry some stuff um, on, you know, just in case. But yeah. we didn't get it. But we had it in case we... We need it. And, and Josh says, yes, that's the price of convenience. Um, and, but, and because we were going to be base camping for a week, we did carry, um, you know, a little bit more water than, you know, things like that than we normally would. <laughs> just because we didn't know, you know, if how hard it was going to be to refill. True. <laughs> and that's what I, that's really what I want to get into for the rest of the show. You know, we can do the trailer thing uh, uh, some more on another time but but i just i did want to discuss that because the trailer did come as a result of that trip yeah. uh, you know seeing the base camp thing uh now now if you went with the other guys uh and they did camp with us for a few nights but they did move around uh a lot they camped in the park one night and then they came back um, and so they they moved around quite a bit and, well, and one of those guys had a trailer um but it really yeah. didn't uh it really didn't you know benefit him as much as it did us because they were moving around right but yeah. some uh i wanted to talk about the area that we stay because uh if, if you're thinking about going to big bend um it's really hard to find a lot of information about where to stay and the area that you want to stay now we went into this kind of blind um I had tried to try to get us a place in the park and they were all booked. And so I, I really almost canceled the trip until I found this place called hip camp. And yeah. when we found uh, hip camp, I, I got to, I got to look in and a lot of these private landowners post their land and you can stay on their land privately. Now we didn't, we had never seen this. We'd never met the guy. I talked to Rob several times, texted back and forth. He was always very good about doing that. Um, and first of all, when he texted me back, that thought me, hey, that that made me think, hey, he's got cell service. So, you know, I thought there's a star. Right. Um, but it was going to it was going to be a place where um, we had never been before, really didn't know where we were, didn't know the area. I'd seen it on a map, but I'd never been there. And I'm a visual learner, so it, I really didn't know what was going on uh, in the area. But we stayed in a place called Coyote Crossing, which is on Hip Camp. Uh, Rob was super nice. Uh, he had bathrooms. Uh, he gave us everything that we needed and um, was super nice guy. Has a great story. And we really, I really enjoyed the area that it was in. What did you think about it? Yeah, I thought it was great. You know, I mean, the views right there, we were, we had a couple of mount, mountain ranges in different directions. Yeah, you know, it was close to kind of a little community there where, you know, you could split off and go to uh, Terlingua or you could go into the park and, and back up to, you know, where we were at. Um, you know, it was kind of a, so, I mean, location was really good. Scenery was really good. I mean, the weather was really good. So it was, and I was, I was very, uh, I felt very good about leaving our stuff there uh, because that, it was private land and he was always around. So yeah, that I was one thing. You know, was there was a couple of times yeah. where you actually left your, uh, your eco flow outside to charge as did I. Uh, I left yeah. my Jackeries outside to charge and never thought anything about it. Uh, no. because it was, uh, Rob was always there. So that is one benefit that you have of staying on private property with, that you don't have staying inside the park. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Area. I would have had a hard time leaving the eco flow out, uh, charging like that. If I was out in just the national forest someplace, I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely. That, that would have been a little harder to do. Yeah. I, I love the area. We were two miles from study Butte. Yeah. And like Tony said, it was a, a great area that was kind of a crossroads. Yeah. Uh, you go straight on the highway. We were on 
Do you remember the highway that we were on? 1776. Oh, uh, yeah, the Farnham Market Road, 1776 yeah. going down. So, yeah. So, um, you know, you, you go straight to go into the park. And you take a right to go to Terlingua and down there to the state park. Uh, so I had a lot of good options, had a fuel, fuel store there. Um, we discovered a hardware store there that was uh, a lifesaver to us. It was yeah. hardware, lots of groceries, um, and you could also get water for five cents a gallon. Or was it 10 cents a gallon? I think it was 10 cents. I think we got 19 ago. gallons that day for a dollar 90 or something. Yeah. Oh, 19 crazy gallons cheap. for two bucks. So yeah, it crazy was, cheap. Yeah. Um, it was really nice. Um, so that was one of the things that we worried about. We actually got water early and drug it down there when we didn't have to, and that would have saved us a lot of weight. So yeah. uh, if we do go back down there again, then we will. Um, oh, uh rob is on home sweet rob. home hey rob hey rob uh we're talking about you rob hope your ears are burning <laughs> um yeah connie said thank you rob for having a great camp we really yeah. appreciate it um but uh rob's wife actually works at the at the hardware store and that's why why he uh told us we asked him do you have water and he said no you have to get down there at the stores 10 cents yeah. a gallon i was like man that's awesome i mean who won't right. pay 10 cents a gallon for water Right. Um, and so we were able to go down there and refill our jugs several times. And uh, it was it was really nice. So I love the area, the Study Butte. Um, there's many, many places or options that you have. We saw some really nice yurts, some TPs, some A-frame thingamabobs. I don't know what they were. They were they were real small and they were A-frame and the top of them were clear. Yeah, I thought those are really cool. I'd love to see yeah. inside of one of those. Um, there's there's a lot of different uh, chalets, chateaus. Uh, didn't see a hotel one, but there's no. a whole bunch of whole bunch of different places you can stay. But uh, you know what else we didn't see that week? That whole week, a Walmart. No, <laughs> no. There's no WalMarts. There's no hospitals. There, there was, some, was, was 80 miles, 80 miles. Yeah. 80 so, miles. yeah, they do have EMS there, so they can come, come and get you, but it will be a long ride yeah. to the hospital. No Walmart. Yeah. No Walmart. Um, but I love the area. I love that study Butte area because yeah. even if there wasn't a Walmart there, there was a place where we could go and pick up things that we need. Uh, the last, day that we were there the friday apparently i'd got some bad gas and my vehicle died on me and so we jumped in the gladiator ran up to the hardware store and got me some um got me some stuff to put in my gas and it worked um, yep. and so i was very excited about that you know it's something that i don't usually carry with me and yeah. so they were they had all that and um and so, you know, you could get anything from fresh vegetables um, to motor oil to water to, you know, frozen ice cream. And yeah. Had it all. Yeah. And also in that area was an RV park where you could get a shower. I was extremely excited about the shower. It was extremely hot, good water pressure, and $5 was well worth the wait. That's, That's right. I would pay that any day to get a good it's shower. It's easy. It's easy. It's a BJ's RV park or RV mm -hmm. resort. You go right up there and you pull up to the building. They have the showers in and you can cash out the, the lady the money. You go right in and you take your shower and you go on about your day. So easy. easy. So easy. Well, uh, they, had, they had taken a uh, single wide trailer and put in, uh, I think they put three showers in there. They had, it was three full bathrooms so you can go in there use the bathroom um they had laundry mat in there too didn't they? had laundry in there as well yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you know that's one thing that we did not know that we know now and so um we did one day get out our showers and all take uh take good showers and and it was amazing but taking it all out putting it all up having to deal with the water go buy more water refill everything and worry about that 
um, it was really worth the five dollars to me. Yeah, uh, I think it was a that was a great find. Yeah, uh, for us to find that. Also in the area, about eight miles down the road was Terlingua. Yeah, uh, Terlingua is a place that you definitely want to put on your list if you go down in that area. Um, I didn't know about the Starlight Theater. Yeah, uh, as you did. So apparently, you had watched Dome Life, and you yeah. Had, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, saw them go there. So, yeah, what attracted they had, you to go there? Uh, well, I mean, it was Dome Life. I didn't know that place existed until I watched their video. I don't know, I guess months ago, and then I re back and I went back and rewatched it. Um, but you know, they had some some crazy good food there, and uh, it's different food as well. They have yeah, quail. the quail. I thought was was wild. You know, I mean, like I'm sure it nobody was has quail. Well, no, I mean, not like <laughs> wild game. I, I mean, like, it's just nobody, you, you don't go to places that, that's, I mean, that's it's different. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, um, and just, I had the brisket. Things. It was good. Yeah. I think yeah. Tony also had the brisket. I did. And the reason I ordered the brisket was because it came with green chili mac and cheese. Yeah. And uh, I am, I am a connoisseur of fine mac and cheese. And I will yeah. eat it everywhere we go. Yeah. And uh, that's the reason I ordered it. It was amazing. Yeah. It was pretty good. They, I don't know. We, yeah, it was, it was good. We, I would we highly good. recommend getting there early. Yes. Uh, we were there. Yeah. Uh, we were there at the store. The Starlight Theater is attached to a store. So we walked around the store about 3 30 and we were going to stay there and eat. Um, and then, and then some, you said, well, they don't open till five. And so you said, well, let's go down to Lajitas and, and see the goat mayor. Yeah. And uh, so we went down there and um, we got back after seeing the goat mayor at 430. And the line was forever long. And this was the line to get on the waiting list. It was yeah. not the line to get in the door. Yeah. So I would highly recommend when we were there at 330, there was nobody in line. Yeah. Nobody. Not one person. And uh, so I would highly recommend getting there about 4, 3.30 or 4, getting in line. And we waited, like Connie said, three hours Yeah, just to get inside. There's yeah. a beautiful view, so you have plenty of things to do. Um, actually ran into a guy uh, that uh, I went outside to check my fridge to make sure all my stuff was still getting cooled down. And there was a, a guy out there taking pictures. And he asked me if he could take a picture of my rig. And I said, sure, that'd be great. And he actually sent me the pictures, what I thought was cool. Yeah. But I also met another guy who um, he came up and said, hey, man, I love you, FJ, blah, blah, blah. And then he said, have you been up the highway? I said, well, we went to Lajitas. And he said, is that how far he went? And I said, yeah, we just turned around, came back. He said, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep yeah. going. He said for about another 20 miles. You'll climb this big hill, and there's this lookout at the top of the hill. You've got to go there. It's the most beautiful drive down here. He was right. Yeah. Yeah. I've, right. Yeah. I've still got to put my video together on, on this trip, but I've got some great drone footage of that. You know, if you guys mm -hmm. go to Instagram, uh, go to my Instagram, you can see one of my reels. Joey's doing the bro pose at the, you know, at the edge the literal edge of that, you know, canyon or whatever. And it's just an amazing view. So, hmm. yeah, it's great. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Um, it, and the, the drive there, um, you know, once you get past Lajitas, you get into the state park. And mm -hmm. it was, it followed the Rio Grande the whole time. The mountains yeah. got bigger and they kept getting bigger and they kept getting bigger and they kept getting bigger. And when we climbed this big giant hill and right at the top of it, uh, we went past some teepees, uh, yeah. which was a place um, where company <laughs> fell and uh, hurt herself and all this other stuff. We had to call EMS and helicopters and all this other stuff. Um, <laughs> it had a scratch on her. So I think it was a scratch on her finger. Um, but we get, to, we get to the top and there was a, uh, sorry, babe. Uh, you know, I love it. Um, but she said, I still have bruises <laughs> and you know, she does still have bruises and she oh, fell no. like 
she she was making fun of me, so she kind of deserved it. But uh, she just fell down on a rock and blah 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 hurt herself. She falls every day, so it's no big deal. Um, but at the top of this this hill, mountain or whatever it was, you're overlooking. It's probably I'm guessing about seven or eight stories. What do you think? About eighty yeah. feet. Yeah. Um, down to the Rio Grande, some some people were actually paddling down the river. Yeah. And uh, which was I thought was so cool because we could watch them. But you can look back down the Rio Grande and see, oh, it's just beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. So I highly recommend going past Lajitas and, and making that drive. It's all highway. There's no back roads. Uh, so if you're in your little Prius or whatever, you can make it. But um, backing up to, uh, yeah, get you in a canoe next time. I hope you yeah, do. Yeah, Rob. That'd be awesome. Yeah, um, for sure. And yeah. and our daughter actually went with Aaron. Those people you were talking about that we saw in the canoes. Yeah, they were. That was with the group that you know Aaron and his wife and kids and McKenna went. Yeah. So when we were sitting there, they were coming along canoeing. Yeah. Um, there time. is yeah. a there is a place in Study Butte where you can actually get a guided tour. Um, yeah. It's a uh, it, Aaron said it was about four hours for the tour, about an hour and a half on the water because it takes a while to get to where you put in and, and take out. But uh, it's about $80 a person, and they yeah. actually got to float down the Rio Grande. And he said that was one of the coolest experiences he had while yeah. they were down there. And McKenna got to go. Yeah, she um, absolutely loved it. So She, it, she enjoys it, telling people about canoeing the Rio Grande. I would love to take our kayaks when we go next time and, and do some of that. I think that would be super fun. I'm going to try to work in some kayak storage on my trailer, too. Oh, Tony. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see if we can make it work. It's yeah. it's, it's getting bigger with every idea. <laughs> yeah, my, I'm sorry, but my uh, my trailer is now a 20 by 30. Yeah. And uh, has three tens. And I have to and trade it off for a <laughs> for a super duty with a V ten in it. Oh, it won't be uh it won't be twenty one miles a gallon in the uh in the gladiator pulling that thing, Tony. No. Anyway. But uh, that was a great but another thing that you knew about that I was totally oblivious to that you and I heard Arla talking about this right when we got down there, was the goat mayor. <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea. I hadn't done my homework. You got Office the shirt of the on. Yeah. You got the shirt on. So tell us about this goat mayor that people need to put on their list. Clay Henry the Third. This uh, he is the elected official. The people of Lajitas voted this goat mayor. He's a third or fourth generation, but uh, he's he's out there every day at the general store in Lajitas, and you can. You can drive right up and pet him and you can go inside the general store and buy him a beer or a wine cooler. Wine and, cooler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he loves the uh, Calypso Berry Blue wine coolers if you, you know, are curious. Oh, man. So, That's so yeah. funny. Well, when, I, when y'all first started talking about this, I thought there is some dude down there that looks like a goat. And that is mayor of this town that she wants to yeah. meet. And I thought, that's just weird to me. I just don't understand. But even weirder than that is having a actual live goat. Yeah. I mean, this is a goat. Yeah. Beer bellied goat. That For sure. Is known yep. as the beer drinking goat mayor of Lahitas. But, but you got to get there early because yeah. he quits he drinking. Get drunk. <laughs> he gets he quits drinking after a while. <laughs> we walked up there and he's got one of the nicest cages of any animal I've ever seen. Oh he yeah, was, uh, he was in there with his with his nice little goat lady, and yeah. um, they were just wandering around, living like kings in there. And uh, there's a trash can to the right, and it was just full of beer bottles. Yeah, I mean full of beer bottles. And I thought, yeah, it's it's. I don't know if this guy's gonna have a siesta or, or uh, have a you know, have it. It's five <laughs> o'clock somewhere type of deal. Right, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, Annabelle is his wife. Oh, that's my, I'm sorry, Arla. I didn't I didn't know that. Uh, Rob says it's borderline. 
<laughs> it's border life, brother. Uh, but, you know, we went into the store, and you asked him what he liked the most, and it ended up being one of the fruity drinks. And, yeah. Uh, uh, we we bought us a few t-shirts and um, and some Dr. Peppers and stuff, and went back out there and and old Clay Henry was more than excited to drink the fruity beer. I yeah. mean, he downed it. Yeah. He downed it, and we took some videos and pictures of him and hung out with him for a minute. We got we got and we were backing out, and uh, these guys pulled up uh as we were backing out and i looked and, and this guy grabbed some coronas or something out of his tailgate you know and it went up there and clay henry he didn't want to have nothing to do with those no he wasn't, he wasn't all about that no free stuff and bring me he was ready beers. for a nap when we lived. yeah <laughs> i think so i got that on in, the list i think i got in on the tail end of his drinking escapades that day yeah probably so he was yeah I don't, I don't think his life expectancy is very long Probably why he's like the fourth or fifth generation. Right. right. But inside the store, they actually had the ballot box where people have voted. That's right. Yeah. That was neat. I thought yeah, that was that's neat. cool. Yeah, it was really neat. But that, that was a really cool area. Um, I love the area. And I believe if we go back again, which I think we will. Yes. Uh, we'll probably stay in the same area because yep. uh, it worked out. Perfect for us. The only thing that I did not like, which you're going to have that anywhere, was the wind. Yeah. The wind was just absolutely out of this world for two nights that we were there. Uh, so I think we the there. wind was probably the biggest reason why we chose to go in town and get a shower. Uh, just yeah. because, you know, you're fighting your your shower structure, trying to get your, your shower done and, and all of that. But Yeah, you know. Arla was throwing a fit. I mean, uh, she was she, just... Yeah. She was throwing a fit over there because yeah. she was having to wash and keep that shower tent off of her and wash. Yeah. And, yeah. and I mean, that was coming in on her because the wind was blowing. And I mean, yeah. she was just having a moment. That's right. Uh, so she, anyway, she's ready to was doing the same thing. It was blowing like crazy. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, it was, it worked out good for us. Yeah. Um. Now, what about inside the park? Now, the first day we went inside the park, and uh, it was the day, it was the 26th, right? Uh, so we... we 27th. Because well, we, we left on the 26th and got there on the 27th. Right, that's 28. right. That's right. Okay. 28. We, we got there Monday afternoon. We went in the park on Tuesday. 28th. Yeah. So this was the 28th. Um, we, we were trying to get into the park about 11 o'clock. Uh, you know, we had driven a um, thousand miles in two days and we slept late, had a breakfast, got around, didn't really have an agenda, uh, which is kind of the way that I like to roll. Yeah. And went into the park. Uh, traffic was backed up. I'm going to say it probably took us 45 minutes at least to get up to the gate where we could yeah. purchase our pass. Um, remind me again how much it was per vehicle. Was it thirty dollars per vehicle? It, yeah, it was thirty bucks per vehicle for all week. And that was um, for seven days. Yeah, yeah. And so they gave you a receipt for you to tape. They already had the tape on it and everything. They just wanted yeah. you to tape it to your windshield. So the next time you came in, you just drove through. Right. Um, thirty dollars per vehicle. That was good for seven days. Now, as soon as we got in, um, there's a little bathroom to the right. We stopped there real quick. Um, use the restroom and then we right off the bat first first thing did our uh, off-road and you had researched this road and told us this is the way we need to go yeah yeah um, and actually I think uh, Chad uh, Chad Morris had told me he was heading down that trail that day too so I thought maybe we'd just go ahead and head down that way and see if we'd run into them but they were so so far ahead of us that we never saw them that day but yeah, we saw Santa Elena Overlook. The mm -hmm. I think that's what it's called, Santa Elena. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, but yeah, yeah, we had to air down. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was pretty washboardy. Now there is a sign up there that says four wheel drive vehicles only. <laughs> um, but yeah. there was uh, there was a Honda Civic and some other ones that did not care about the sign they just took off 
Now, from the parts that we went down, um, it was not a Jeep road. No. And so it was uh, pretty much just a non-maintained road. A couple of dry river beds to cross. That's that's pretty much it. But yeah. in the rainy season, where they say it gets washouts and you have to do water crossings, I imagine it's it, it, it would get pretty hairy. Right. Uh, but if you go there anytime, um, it, it is just fine. No yeah. big deal. We actually went off the main road and went exploring. We wanted to see what a couple of the campsites looked like. Went down and uh, did an unexpected hike because we heard some water. Yeah. And I went down to a little riverbed down down through there and saw some uh, uh, bear tracks and all this other stuff. So it was it was pretty neat to get yeah. to explore down through there. Uh, but I think that was just one of those little creeks that runs into the Rio Grande right, right down right down there. Yeah. Yeah. But down there at, at the Overlook, it was. It was not what I expected. Um, it was yeah. a place that did not look even real. It looked like you were on some other planet. Yeah. Um, it was it was like the giant wall to keep the white walkers out. I mean, yeah. it was just unbelievable about nine or ten stories tall and looks like just chopped off. Yeah. Um, sheer it rock was wall. straight up. Yeah. It was it was incredible. Uh, beautiful. There's a slot canyon right there that you can hike up in. I think Matt and Kara hiked up in it. Uh, when we were down there, there were so many people there, they wouldn't even let us in the parking lot. Um, yeah, so, they were waving us yeah, on. Like, I can't go come on, in. Go on, you can't come in here. And when we, here. Whenever I paid to get in, the guy told us that, that that particular day was the biggest day they had all year. All year. The 28th of December. Yeah. 364 other days of the year that we didn't go. We chose to go on the busiest day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been to Disney World on the busiest day of the year, and I've been to oh. South Texas on the busiest day. I can promise mm. you that South Texas is much, but much better. Yeah, that's true. Um, it, you know, and even when we were, when we were on the regular highways, just driving, there wasn't that much traffic. Mm. Um, when we were off road. There wasn't hardly any traffic, right? Um, but if you stop at a visitor center or if you stop at an overlook or something, that's where you saw the crowds. Yeah. And uh, so right around the corner, there was a visitor center. They call it a visitor center. It was like a bathroom and on this side of a hill. There wasn't really much to it. Um, but, you know, I was able to get my stamp there yeah. uh, for my national park and and then we, and then that drive from that overlook to where we came to the main highway again, that drive was just beautiful. Yeah. Very, very scenic, very wide open. It was just beautiful. And also down there um, at the bottom is where Matt and Kara stayed uh, at that, uh, I can't remember the name of the campground. Oh, I'll 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 pull it up here. Hang on. Yeah, I can't remember what the name of it is, but um, it's it's down there on one of the side creeks that uh, that where they stayed. But we went up, and then we went down to Panther Junction. Got there right before they closed. They close at five o'clock, and uh, so you definitely got to get there before five o'clock. That it's it's the nice has everything that you could possibly want. National Cat Park type visitor center, Cottonwood. You know, they stayed at Cottonwood. Cottonwood campground. Yeah, Cottonwood Campground, which is an established campground. And 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 here's a little tidbit of information for you on Cottonwood. If you go on there and look six months from now, it says all the sites are booked. They release the sites two weeks in advance, so you have to the date that you want to get there. They release the sites two weeks in advance. Rob says this tr this place is hard and it takes lots of gear, but it's so worth it. And, yeah. Um, you know, I agree. I totally agree. Uh, this 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 place, and I've been uh, Utah, I've been to Colorado, I've been New Mexico, I've been out east all the way to West Virginia, been north to New York, um, been north to North Dakota, South Dakota. This place was not like anywhere I had ever been. Yeah, the the range of things that you saw, um, 
and they had some buttes like you would only see in Utah. They had mountain ranges and rock formations that you wouldn't see anywhere else. It was yeah. it was really diverse, very beautiful, and um, and it was it was it was really nice. That now we scenic, did go down. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say that scenic drive that you mentioned uh, from Cottonwood on back up to the main drive is called Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive. Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive. That's right. Yeah. I remember Very seeing awesome. that. Very awesome. Uh, here's a, another little tidbit of information that you want to keep in mind <clears throat> on your Gaia Maps. Gaia Maps, however you pronounce it. It does have a national park overlay. Nash that you can go in there and it will follow you. So you know exactly where you are. I would highly Nash, recommend doing it. Yes, highly. It's called the NPS visitor layer. NPS national visitor parks. layer. It's yep. not just for this. It's for all the national parks in yep. the nation. So yep. uh, download that. Anytime you're around a national park, you can set that as your main layer and it will put that on top of everything. And that way you can see where you're in, where you at in the park. Um, and if you have that park, that area downloaded even when you don't have service you could still see where you're going so that's right it works very well um we also went down to um the bokeas overlook now this park is huge um i think let's see travis said he's going to stay at terlingua ranch um travis that was one of the places that we had looked at staying as well it's a good 15 20 miles back up the highway um so you're going to be a long ways from everything just just yeah. so you know um it, it was about 15 or 20 miles back towards uh when when you're coming into south texas it was right there and then we went about another 15 or 20 miles to where we stayed in study butte so you're going to be quite a bit of quite a ways from everything and one of the thing about this park is it's so massive it you you will drive a lot of miles while you're there because it takes a lot of miles to get to anything so uh, in, in the entrance to the park down to the bokeas overlook uh, i'm thinking it was what 28 miles uh somewhere around 28 or 30 miles uh, to get to Bo the bokeas overlook and bokeas is a little town in mexico there is a port of entry there. You do have to have a passport to get in. They have a restaurant and they have a place where you could stay. Uh, I don't know if it's a hotel or if it's a hostel or something like that. Um, but uh, they do have a place where you could stay. And um, and so it's. Uh, so from the from where you pay to get in, it's 41 miles, 41 miles. So it's even yeah. further than what I thought. Yeah. So you're looking at a good 80 mile out 80 mile day if you go down to Bokeas. Yeah. Um, now go early. Uh, they have a little boat that takes you across, and then you can ride a donkey into the town. This town is over 200 miles from any other city in Mexico, which is really neat. Uh, they have a really good relationship with the United States uh, because they depend on tourists uh, to come in there and spend money. Yeah. They also have a Facebook page um where you can actually order food and we didn't know this either where you can actually order food from the restaurant and they will bring it over onto the american side if you don't have a passport so you can eat their food from the restaurant and uh when we when we get to the overlook there were some people there with a to-go box eating tamales and i'm like what in the world what yeah and so anyway all this new information that we've got um Let's see, you do way more than that with Grand Tetons and Yellowstone. That's true. Um, the, those parks are just humongous. So you've got to plan on driving a lot. Uh, another tidbit of information is at uh, Down Bible Kiss and also at the Panzer Junction store, there are uh, gas stations in the park. And yep. they're not gouging you on prices either. They were the same price in the park as they were outside the park. So. Uh, that's a good tidbit of information to know. That was yep. one thing that we, uh, you also get free water at Panther Junction and at the Bokeas, um Ranger stations. So right. 
something that you that you need to know. Uh, Travis mentioned he was staying at the what was it the uh, Terlingua Ranch. Terlingua Ranch. My understanding is I don't know if you've researched this, but uh, there's a an area is called the Christmas Mountains Ranch, and it's just outside of the park. Uh, off to the east, kind of northeast of where we were staying, and it's there's a apparently there's a really nice trail mm -hmm. through the Christmas Mountains range there, um, and the the only way you can access it is uh, from the Turlingua uh, Ranch. Turlingua Ranch, and yeah. I guess they kind and of they actually give guided tours up there. And yeah, you have to yeah. go with them to go yeah. up there. I did see that. Yeah, yeah. Rob wants to know if we did the hot springs. <laughs> Uh, sort after of. we left uh, the Volkius Overlook, we went to the hot springs. Um, I actually didn't get in the hot springs, but we walked down there, and uh, and some of our friends got in there. But uh, it was that hot was a, that day. That was a neat little hike. Yeah. Um, it was it was warm that day. Ooh, it yeah. was warm. Yeah. Um, it's it, very crowded down there. Uh, they only let 20 vehicles in. Once they get to 20 vehicles, they only let one in, one out. And so there may be a little bit of a wait. When we came out, I think there were about 15 vehicles waiting to get down in there. Yeah. So it was uh, it was pretty packed. So um, you have to figure that mm -hmm. in. And it is about a quarter mile uh, walk from the parking lot to the hot to the springs. So it yeah. is a pretty good walk from uh, to get down there to it. And some people were parking and at the waiting area and then walking down there which that would have made it over a mile at least yeah and you're walking down the road and uh, i would would not recommend that just wait and it'll be fine yeah it was it was pretty neat uh on your way down there and on the way back they have places where they have made artwork um and you can they have little coffee cans that you can put the art put your money in there if you want to buy any of the artwork also at the bakias overlook there were people that were selling things. I heard that was contraband, and that's actually illegal because you don't pay taxes on that. Um, but I made a new friend we, down there. We made a friend. Yeah, his who, name is uh, Vlad. 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 I think his wife worked at the restaurant, and he yeah. loved to say Feliz Navidad. Yeah. <laughs> he was. He was he's a, a funny guy. guy. Yeah. The only English that guy. he knew was five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, and Feliz Navidad. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. But uh had a great time. Uh, we actually, probably one of my favorite moments on this trip was after we went to the Bukias Overlook. They had a big parking area up there. We moved out of everybody's way. We backed up and we opened our tailgates and we fixed lunch right there on the Rio Grande River. And yeah. that was so cool to me. That, that was so Love cool. It. The mountains right on the other side of the Rio Grande that are on the Mexico side, you know, that little range that ran down yeah. through there. It was just amazing. That was that was one of my favorite moments of the, of the trip. I, yeah. I love that area. I'll do that again if we go yeah. down there. Um, yeah. Because it was, just, it was just a nice, peaceful place. Uh, you felt like you were in another world or in another yeah. country, actually, yeah. when, when you were there. So really enjoyed that. Really yeah. enjoyed that. And I really enjoyed helping, helping the locals out. Um, you know, I, I thought it was, I thought it was odd that 50 yards up the road was a port of entry where you had to have a passport to go into another country. And here we are 50 yards down the road at the overlook and right on the other side of the river was about six old Chevrolet pickups and people just walking back and forth across the river. Yeah, and they come up there to sell their stuff, and when they get done, they go back. That's and right. so, that did really did not make sense to me, but that's the way it is. And hey, whatever we got to do to make this work. That's so, right. It was really neat, and uh, like I said, I would do that all over again. I love that time that we had there, and we went there from the hot to the hot springs, and that's where we finished our day. Yeah. Um. Now, I want to ask you this. Would you go again? Absolutely. I think we ought to go every year. There's so much of that place that we didn't get to see. Uh, I agree. You know, and, and we only got to spend, and we actually even did get to spend any time in the state park. We we went on the highway, but yeah, uh, so many people have told me that they enjoy the state park more than the national park. 
uh, because, um, you know, it's more remote. And, you know, uh, uh, Mo and Mariah told me that when you get into the state park, you feel like you're a million miles from anywhere. And uh, I think that's cool. And I, yeah. I can't wait to, to go back and do that. But yeah, I, I believe this was a perfect time of the year to go. Um, you know, people get off around Christmas. And so I imagine that's why it was a little more crowded than normal. Right. But to be able to spend New Year's down there was pretty special to me. Yeah. Um, you know, because we were spending it uh, with with people that we love. Yeah. In a place that was just beautiful. And we actually did get to experience one of the things that I had looked so forward to down there, and that was the night sky. Yeah. It was, yeah, we would do our <laughs> we would do our little our little binoculars with our fingers and, and, and uh try to cut was, out some of the, the camp light. The, yeah, and, and Tony would turn off the there was a fire <laughs> fire band down there, so we had the we had the uh, propane fire pit going at night because it did get down in the 50s, 40s uh, at night. But he would turn it down and get rid of all the lights so we could see. But that's the first place that I've ever been that you could actually see the Milky Way. It was, it was beautiful, and it was it was a dream come true for me because seeing stars like that was is just something that I've always wanted to do, and yeah. I've never been in a place I've. I've been to a remote Colorado on the top of, you know, a 12,000 foot mountain in the middle of the night. And you can see a lot of stars, right. but this place, it was different. It was really different. And, uh, you had, I would highly recommend that you download that app that Tony has on his phone. Tell us about the app, about the stars. Oh, uh, it's just a, <clears throat> it's an app called sky map, you know, so you download it and it's GPS driven. And then you, when you activate it, you can, pointed at the sky and you can turn on just the planets or the, the the stars the galaxies and all that and you can just isolate you know so you're just seeing the planets and you can go around if you see a bright star you look at it it might be a star or it might be a planet and it'll tell you it's really neat but it's it's called sky map one other thing about going down there and i don't know if it was the time of the year or if actually the place but there was not a moon at all uh, the moon was actually on the other side of the earth. Uh, <laughs> every time you brought out the sky map, you would say the moon's down there. The moon's down um, that way. And I guess that's why it's so dark there because you don't have that moonlight. Right. Um, like you do, you know, at, back at home. So it, yeah. it makes it where you can actually see more of the stars um, because it's so dark. Yeah. So I think, I think when we go next time, I'm going to have a little better camera. Yeah. Yeah. You had a, you had a rough time after, after Aaron took a picture of your vehicle that had all the stars in it. You, you it seemed like you were out there for hours trying to get one like it. You just couldn't do it. Yeah. I, I was close. You know, I was <laughs> anyway, I was using my phone, which is not really, you know, the best equipment for that. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I get it. You live in I get it. Well, it was, it was super awesome and um i had a great time great time with you and and arlen mckenna and and uh, aaron and, and carrie and the kids um it was it really couldn't have been much better yeah now i really don't want to um to do some different things when we go down there um, i was the only one that had a a passport on this trip so i'm hoping everybody gets one and we're able to experience bukias uh, next time, I really want to go, go into the state park. Um, I really want to do the hike down through the slot Canyon. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's just, just a lot of things. Uh, it's, it's, you just can't do or see everything in one trip. It's impossible. Right. right. Um, uh, but I think, uh, everybody says that the best time to go is October to first of March because other than that it just gets way too hot june yeah. and july are the rainy seasons which i think that's odd to me um but uh you will cross dry bed after dry bed even on the highway uh you'll go across and they don't even bother making bridges down there because it only rains like a month and that's it um 
And so to imagine some of that stuff underwater would be completely weird. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was, it was an awesome trip. I, I love it. Uh, you know, there are so many people in Texas uh, that said, well, I've lived here all my life. I've never been down there. Right. They're really missing out. Yeah. They're really missing out. And if you're looking for a place in the wintertime to escape the cold, to go where it's warm, put this on your list. Yeah. You won't be disappointed. Yeah. And if you can't get a place in the park, I promise you these private places like Rob's at Coyote Crossing, they are just as good with just as good of a view yeah. as what you would get in the actual park. It's it's really, really good. And a lot of aspects of it's better. I mean, it's peace of mind of the security of the private private place where you can leave your stuff is, is uh, you know, pretty cool. I agree. I agree. Well, man, what a great recap. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to go back just thinking about it. I know. I'm ready to go back just thinking about it. Uh, yeah. I just, I loved it down there. The, the trip there and back is not something to look forward to, but once you're there, it's awesome. And yeah. so I would highly recommend that, that, uh, that you put that on your list, take a couple days to get down there. Don't kill yourself. There's nothing to look at, nothing worth looking at between here and there. And so just take your time and get down there. Once you get down there, I promise it'll be a trip of a lifetime. That's right. Well, from between Tony and myself, I appreciate everybody being on here tonight. Uh, this is an odd time for us being on here Monday. That's just the way the schedule worked out. But for us, you know, we want to be on here at least once a week, and this is when we could do it. And I appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us, and we will be back next week, I promise. Lots of big things happening. Tune in next Lots week. Lots of big things. Lots of big things. we got a lot of things that we want to throw out there, a lot of uh, announcements to make, um, and uh, a lot of good things to come. I promise. It's going to be a lot better. Did you see Rob? He said, welcome back anytime. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate yeah. you. I appreciate yeah. you, Rob. Well, we definitely hope to come back. Definitely hope to come back, and I promise you, we will be back. We will be back. So on behalf of myself and Tony, I hope you all have an amazing week. I hope everything goes your way. Make sure and bro pose every chance you get. Take care of yourself. Live the life you've always dreamed of. Look out for number one. And don't step in number two. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. Professor. 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 Professor and friends. Joey the professor and friends. Professor and friends. Professor and friends. The professor and friends.